Okay, good uh, good morning to everyone and welcome to this Power BI Foundation session. My name is Akbar Panjwani and obviously I'll be delivering this session. This is actually the second session that we're running in the learning pathway. The first session was the awareness course, which I hope uh, a lot of you had the opportunity of attending. So the purpose of today is to build on what we've learned so far. So specifically, these are the topics that I want to look at today. Uh, we've got uh, a couple of hours penciled in, but in reality, the session will only take around an hour or so. So I want to look at how you go about accessing Power BI, how you request uh, access. And then I want to spend some time looking at the interface uh, to make sure that you're, you all feel comfortable moving around Power BI. Along the way, we'll come across some terminologies that uh, would be useful for you to be aware of. And then I want to show you some of the functionalities that you have when you interact with a dashboard. And then the functionalities and features that you have when you interact with a report. OK, so there's a difference between dashboards and reports. A dashboard is a collection of reports. These are the outcomes. So by the end of uh, the session today, all of you will be aware of something called the dashboard catalog. This is basically a document uh, which you can download, which goes through the current uh, existing dashboards which have already been designed and developed for yourselves. I, I want to make sure that you feel comfortable moving around and that you can describe some of the benefits, components and functionalities of uh, Power BI. Hopefully you will have learned some terminologies and above all, you'll have an idea of uh, the type of interaction that you can have with your reports and dashboards. Furthermore, you'll hopefully be able to understand how you can share and collaborate with others on a dashboard and also be able to use the subscribe feature. OK, so these are my learning outcomes uh, for the next hour. Before we start, just a quick overview of what exactly Power BI is. So Power BI is a software tool which is part of the Microsoft family. It is uh, the BI stands for business intelligence and basically it's a tool that allows you to analyze your information, your data. So you decide what information to feed into Power BI. It then takes that information, turns it around and visualizes the information. So because it's now in a visualized manner, the information is so much more easier for you to understand and interpret. OK, all the dashboards that it creates are all very interactive. Uh, so again, this will make it easier for you to understand your data. As the graphic shows, you can access Power BI across multiple platforms. So your main computer, your iPad, and even you can access uh, Power BI on your mobile phone, uh, whether it's Android or whether it's uh, iPhone. You may remember from the previous course, I mentioned that Power BI has two different components or two different flavors, if you like. So the first component is something called Power BI Service. Some people call it uh, portal or some people call it app. Uh, and then the second component of Power BI is something called the desktop uh, version. Basically, the desktop version is what the developers and designers will use. They will decide what uh, data to bring in, what visuals or graphs, etc., to produce, and they will eventually publish. Once they've published, once they've done their bit, that's when Power BI service comes into action. So Power BI service is a website. The address is www.powerbi.com. And um, that website will show you the output of what the developers and designers have done. So if you look at that graphics, you can see uh, on the top left hand corner, it says 50 plus apps connect into Power BI. So again, this is the developers deciding what source of information to bring into Power BI. Power BI desktop, so that's uh, what the des designers and developers use in order to publish. That then is published into this website. And as I mentioned, um, it interacts with the data, with your organization data. And uh, yeah, it is uh, accessible across multiple platforms. So Power BI service or app or portal, whatever term you want to give it, is a website. It's a software as a service, a SaaS offering, and it's a website 
uh, that uh, we uh, end users or consumers uh, use. So um, unless you're thinking of becoming a developer or designer, which hopefully you are, um, and we'll provide training on that, um, for most people, Power BI service uh, for consumers is uh, ideal, and that's where you'll spend most of your time. So how do you get access to Power BI? Well, what you need to do is you need to go to the IT portal, and in the IT portal, you go for the access request form. Now, there are two types of licenses. One is a paid license and one is a free license. The paid license is only if you, your intention is to become a designer, developer. Uh, you've had some experience uh, using some of the advanced features of, of Excel and you feel that's going to be appropriate. Uh, and then your intention is to actually publish a, a, a dashboard. So that's where the paid license comes in. For most users, the free license will suffice because that is the license that you need in order to be a consumer and be able to access uh, the website www.powerbi.com. Okay, so you get access via the IT portal. Also in the IT portal, you can go to the dashboard request form. So as I mentioned, there's something like 13 or 14 different dashboards which, which have already been designed for you. Um, and they go across the domains uh, and um, more are coming on stream. But if you need to access to those dashboards to see what's pertinent to your role, to your domain, you go to the IT portal and you fill in the dashboard request form. Again, you just list down your domain and you list down which uh, dashboard you would like access to. What I'm now going to do is spend some time going through some of the features and some of the functionalities of Power BI. So let me just uh, press escape. Uh, by the way, are there any questions so far? No. Nope. OK, I'll take questions at the end in any case. So as I mentioned, Power BI, there are two components to it. We're not going to look at the developer version. Instead, we're going to look at the version which is for consumers, which is www.powerbi.com and press enter. And there we go. This is what it looks like. So my screen is a bit cluttered. So when you look at it at first glance, it looks a bit cluttered, uh, but let's break it down. So you've got some options over here on the left hand side and you've got some options over here in the top right hand corner. So let's discuss these. So home, this is where this is my landing page and basically on my home page, it shows me what I've recently been up to. OK, favorites. So if there's any dashboards that I want to make into a favorite, uh, that's where they would appear. So in my case, I tend to go into a theater dashboard a lot. Um, so that's the reason why I made it into a favorite. Recent, so these are the other dashboards I've recently opened up uh, uh, and there's a list of them. Now I mentioned that uh, the if you want to do any develop work, development work and you want to create your own dashboard or something, you need the paid license. Well, Strictly speaking, there is little things, there is some things that you can create within this website. Uh, and that's the reason why you've got the option for create, data sets, goals. OK, so there's little simple things that you can do over here. You don't need the paid license. So if, for example, you wanted to create a dashboard on your, I don't know, your Spotify music list, uh, you know, you can do so over here. You just uh, indicate which uh, data you want to use. Uh, and then start uh, following the process. So there is simple things, simple creation work that you are able to do here. Apps, now this is the main one. This is where all those dashboards, the 12, 13 dashboards, which have already been designed uh, and are live, that's where they all appear. Okay, so I'll come back to apps. Shared with me, so these are uh, dashboards that people have shared with me and given me access. Deployment pipelines. Uh, so when you are doing your own stuff, uh, this helps you um, categorize uh, and uh, decide what's going to follow on from next. Learn. Now, 
within the implementation team, we have got our own hub, uh, which I'll show you. And that's where the training material I'm using for this training session, the PowerPoints, et cetera, et cetera, uh, is all hosted. But in addition to that, you can also use Learn over here, Learn, and there you can see some of the learning material that Microsoft uh, have um, uh, given you access to. So, for example, you can register for free webinars, you can look at report, you can look at uh, videos, YouTube, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, so this is Learn, which is offered to you by Microsoft themselves. Workspace. Workspace, so this is where you would, uh, if you have done any of your own design work, this is where Workspace and My Workspace will come into play. But of all of these, this is the important one, apps. Okay. Let me just mention a few things about these uh, options that you've got in the top right hand corner. Um, search, uh, settings, but to be honest, all of these, they're not going to be important. Um, um, you know, you can upload your profile, your profile picture if you wanted to do so, etc. But these are the important ones of which apps is the most important. Apps gives you a list of the existing dashboards which have gone live. So I'm going to look at theatre as an example. There we go. So the dashboard is called theatre. And a dashboard is a collection of reports. So theater dashboard consists of this report, this report, this report, and these two reports. Okay, so theater dashboard has five individual reports. A dashboard is a collection of reports. And you've got some options over here at the top, and over here at the top right hand corner. And then, of course, you've got the uh, visuals themselves for that report. So I'm currently looking at theatre utilisation report, which is part of theatre dashboard, and this consists of four different visuals. They're all tiled next door to each other. So we've already learned from the previous course that uh, the visuals are very interactive. So as I move my mouse, you can see a tool tip appearing, indicating to me what the figures are, what the utilisation time series is. I can go for monthly figures, I can go for weekly figures. OK, so we already know that there's interaction there. Uh, and likewise, we already know that if I click on a hospital. Then all the visuals automatically change. OK, so I've clicked on Royal Manchester Children's Hospital. This has changed. This visual has changed and this visual has changed. Yes, yeah, so it's very interactive. Whatever selection, whatever selection I make, this data will reflect my choice. If I click away, I'm back to where I was, which is at trust level. I can also do the same using these filters over here. So if I wanted to look at uh, St. Mary's, I wanted to look at uh, St. Mary's uh, Gynae Theatre. OK. And then I wanted to play around with some of the data. So I've got date slide over here and there we go. OK, so now it's just showing me St. Mary's Hospital, Gynae Theatre, Obstetrics, between this date to this date. OK. And then if I want to go back, this button over here is very useful. Reset to default. So if I click on that, do you want to reset filters, slices and other data view changes you've made? Yes, please. And then I'm back at trust level. So I we've learned that uh, all the visuals are very interactive. I can click and uh, the visuals will reflect the choice I have made. Within each visual, you'll notice that there's options over here in the top right hand corner of the visual itself. Okay, so let's look at these. So the first one. Okay, is copy. And then I can go into a Word document or anything. Control V to paste and there we go. OK, so very easy to paste. Into a Word document or any other document, so that's the copy facility. 
Then we've got focus mode, which basically means that it zooms into that visual, like so. OK, so if you don't, if you want to look at these visuals one by one, then go to focus mode. And then for every visual, we have got three dots, an ellipse, four dots. And when I click on that, these options suddenly pop up. So the first one is add a comment. So if I go for that, what happens is that this panel opens up here on the right hand side. And basically, this is a great way of making, of putting down any observations that you have regarding any of the data. So for example, you can write, this is, whoops, is really interesting. There we go. OK, so I then go for post. So basically what happens is that can you see this little icon suddenly popped up? OK, let me show you. OK, so that icon means that someone has gone in and they've made a comment regarding this visual and there is the comment. OK, so people can look at that uh, and hopefully it'll uh, guide them and uh, help them. The other thing that you can do with a comment is to do this. Go for the at symbol. Pick up a name, so I'll choose my colleague. And then make your comment and then post it. And what will happen is that your colleague will get a email. We'll get an email nudging them to go in and have a look at this because you've made a comment that this is really interesting. Okay, let me show you what I mean by that. So here's one I did earlier. There we go. So this is uh, a colleague of mine, Chris. Uh, he mentioned me. Uh, he wrote the word hello. Uh, and uh, yep, I can click on here in order to open up the comment. He was testing this facility out. OK, so when you use the ad symbol, it's a way of nudging someone to go in and have a look at the stats because you as their colleague uh, feels it's important for them to be made aware of. Incidentally, all of these comments, you know, you can not delete them, so they're not there forever. So once you've made your point, people have had a look, they've digested it, they've come back to you. Uh, you can always go in and delete. And there we go. The comment was deleted. Okay. So that's add a comment. Another way that you can collaborate with your colleagues and share uh, information that you've gleaned from these uh, dashboards is to chat in Teams. When you do that, a link appears. And then this link, you just send it to someone. And then they will be able to click on this link and be able to open up this visual in Microsoft Teams. OK, so again, a great way of you discussing, collaborating uh, uh, and moving forward on, on any data that you think is relevant to your team. OK, incidentally, if they click on this link and they don't have access to the dashboard in the first place, they will get a message saying, can you please request access or something along those lines. So that's chat in Teams, export data now. All this information, as we've already discussed, has come in from a variety of different sources. So, uh, you know, it could have come from an Excel document, an Access document, an SQL database, whatever it might be. Uh, but if you wanted to, you can extract this uh, and export it out again. So say, for example, you wanted to create uh, an Excel pivot table or something like that, in which case, export data and it'll convert it into Excel format that you can export. So there's nothing stopping you taking any of the information in any of the visuals, in any of the reports, in any of the dashboards, uh, and then digesting it further. Um, you know, you have that option due to the fact that we have export data uh, available to us. If you prefer the good old fashioned table format, there we go. So, so you can easily convert any visual into a table format if that makes more sense to you. What else have we got? Spotlight. OK, so this is just a little gimmick. When I click on Spotlight, it will temporarily conceal the other visuals. There we go. OK. 
and then get insights. Now this is a useful feature, but it's not actually uh, applicable to us. So insights uh, is something called artificial intelligence. I'm sure you've all come across that term. So AI is basically uh, the ability of computers to help us humans by trying to understand, interpret, uh, help us uh, digest information at a very quick pace uh, and help us along. So Get Insights is basically artificial intelligence will try and interpret this data. However, when I click it, this panel opens up, but it doesn't work. Artificial intelligence, Get Insight, will only work if we were hosting this information on a Microsoft server. Because, but because we're up, uh, where we've published all this information on an NHS server, that's the reason why the AI doesn't work. There is one area where AI, artificial intelligence, does work, and uh, I'll show you that shortly. So, Every single visual has those dots in the corner that you can uh, utilize. And some of them have others, things like, uh, you know, if you wanted to change things into ascending order or descending order or anything like that, uh, you can do so. Uh, so, yep, I always recommend that once you get access to uh, Power BI, go and explore, go and play. Use your left mouse click and from time to time, use your right mouse click and you'll come across all sorts of options uh, which are available to you. So, we've discussed these options in the top right hand corner, but in addition to that, let's now go for the right mouse click. And when I go for a right, right mouse click, I've got some further options available to me. So, yep, show as table. I can say, right, show me all the hospitals, but exclude the one I've just clicked on. OK, so you probably saw one of the hospitals uh, unassigned uh, be rem uh, was temporarily removed. I can always reset to default, of course. OK, so I can point and click and then I can include or exclude data from the presentation or, and this is the important one, I can go for drill down or drill through. Basically, all the information in the dashboards and reports you can drill down to a much, much more granular level if you wanted to do so. So in this case, drill through. And there we go. It's take me down one step uh, and shows me the information uh, at a much more granular level and then I can go back. For some of the other dashboards, when I go for right click, I can actually drill down to patient level. So if, for example, I was a consultant and I wanted to know which patient is in A&E, what time they appeared, when they attended, uh, what their chief complaint was, when they were diagnosed, how long they were waiting, etc., etc., all that I am able to do using the A&E dashboard. And there's quite a few other dashboards as well which contain patient level details uh, if you needed access to that. So again, please, uh, when you get access, do not only use your left mouse click, but from time to time, use your right mouse click. And that's where the drill down option is available. So we've discussed uh, uh, some of the uh, options that you have uh, on a visual itself. OK, I now want to do what I want to do now is explore these options. OK, so these options are part of the dashboard. These ones are for the report and these are for the dashboard so let's see some of the uh, features of the dashboard so file i can print there we go and it's done a nice job it's automatically added a header the date and time what the dashboard is called a footer page numbers yeah so you don't have to do any of the formatting you don't have to mess around with any of that Embed, uh, you're not going to do that. Um, but this one's quite interesting, generate a QR code. So you might remember I mentioned that you can access all these visuals on your mobile phone if you have a smartphone. Well, if you go for generate QR code, this box comes up and a quick reference code, like a bar chart, like a uh, uh, thing you find on a, on a uh, shopping trolley, uh, when you buy an item, a uh, barcode, looks like that. All you do, you take your mobile phone 
and you point at it and you click and then it will automatically take you to that dashboard as long as you have access to the dashboard. You can even download it uh, and then send it to someone uh, so they can have access as long as they've got uh, permission to go to that dashboard. OK, so you can actually die, you know, look at all this information on your mobile phone if you wanted to do so. So that's generate a QR code. Let's now look at export. And here I've got two options, PowerPoint and PDF. So PowerPoint, let me show you one. There it is. Let me just move this over. OK, so it's done a good job of this. It's automatically op added a opening slide. And then I've got the individual uh, visuals. OK, so this is when I've exported it to PowerPoint. And then I've got the option of exporting to PDF. And here's one I did earlier. So this is pure PDF, uh, portable document format. And again, it's all nice. OK, this one, I think there's. Um, it's not quite displaying that one. Let me just refresh. There we go. Yeah, so that's PDF. So you can export easily to PowerPoint and PDF. Chat in Teams. Now, we've already come across this when we were over here. The difference is that this one, Chat in Teams will send a link just to this visual. If you go for Chat in Teams over here, You'll generate a link that you can send to people, which will give them access to all the visuals in this uh, dashboard. OK, so that's what that is. Get insights, which, as I said, is the artificial intelligence, but it's not working because we are hosting all this on an NHS server. Subscribe. This is interesting. If you are following any of your data, what you can do is you can go for subscribe this panel opens up and then you can go for add new subscription and basically you can fill all this in subject blah 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 all that kind of stuff but basically what you can do is that you can say right every hour or every day weekly or monthly i want you to send me a picture of the latest stats for my uh for my hospital for my uh, specialty okay so you can specify how often it's done so i'll go for daily you can specify the time so every day at uh, let's say 11 15 starting from this date to this date send me a snapshot of this information save and close and then what will happen is Every day or once a week or once a month, whatever frequency you have indicated, you'll get an email like this. OK, so I've set this up on a daily basis. So every day at 416, I get this email. OK, so it's got a link to the report. But most importantly, it's got this attachment. If I click on it. There we go. So every day I will get this picture it's a ping file png ping file um, which will tell me exactly what the stats are for that date for that time uh, and it's sent to me automatically into my inbox okay so subscribe really useful i mean obviously nothing beats going into power bi manually yourself but if you're too busy and you want to see a snapshot of what's happening in your uh, for your uh, hospital you know you can set up subscribe these three dots you're not likely to use. Let's move on. Reset to default, very important. You know, a lot of people ask me, well, once I get access, once I start playing, what happens if I break it? You know, will I get into trouble? Well, you can't break it because whatever uh, options you've chosen, whatever right click, whatever left click options you've chosen, whatever filtering you've done, you can just go for reset to default. Do you want to reset filters, slices and other data view changes you've made? Yes, please. And then I'm back where I was, which is at trust level, so I can see all the stats for the whole trust. Bookmarks is quite interesting. 
if I am interested in a particular hospital, so let's say, for example, I am interested in Withamshaw, and I am interested in uh, Withamshaw Burns Theatre and Burns Care, and I'm interested in these dates. What I can do is I can go for bookmark, add a personal bookmark. Okay, I give it a name, whatever it might be, and then I go for save. So what happens in future, all I, if I wanted to quickly jump to my data, I just go for bookmark, choose the option, and Okay, it's taking some time, but the idea of a bookmark, of course, is that once you've flagged it up, as a, you've made something favourite, it will automatically take you there uh, without you having to reset uh, the filters. Okay, so you can have lots of different bookmarks, and as you can see, I've done quite a few of those. Okay, so I can quickly jump to any one of these uh, as and when I want. View, so I can go for full screen. I can also change colors. So if I find uh, this better, okay, or if I find this better, yeah, I can change it if I so wish. The dashboards, the majority of dashboards, they change uh, on a daily basis. Um, if you wanted to refresh, this is the option. There is one dashboard, which is a &E, uh, real time, which changes every 15 minutes. You've got comments over here in the top right hand corner. Again, we've discussed that. Okay. You, uh, you can make something into a favorite. And then if you wanted to know, if you know, wanted to know the name of the developer who designed this, uh, you can click the information uh, button over here. So every single dashboard, and remember I've just used theatre as an example, have has a similar look and feel to it. So all of them will have these options in the top left hand corner, all of these options in the top right hand corner. They'll all consist of individual reports, and whatever visual has been turned on, they'll all have some options over here in the top right hand corner of that visual. Plus, you have the ability of um, going for a right click and drilling down uh, and looking at the hierarchy uh, and being able to view uh, the information at a much more granular level if required. So, We've discussed this, we've discussed this, we've discussed some of the options on the visuals themselves. Let me now show you support and guidance. Now I mentioned to you that uh, we within the implementation team have got a hub set up which contains a lot of information, including the PowerPoint presentation that I'm using today. Uh, but in addition to that, within each dashboard, you've also got user guides, Okay, which explains what everything is. And the one I like that I think is really important is glossary. So if on your dashboard you come across any terms that you're not quite sure of, you know, how do they define downtime? How do they define utilization in session? What exactly does that mean? Well, go to glossary and it'll tell you exactly how those terms were derived at. And it'll also show you some of the calculations that were done in order to get those figures in the first place. Okay, so glossary is very important. And again, you'll find that on all the dashboards. Usage metrics. If you wanted to see whether your colleagues are going in and they're uh, interacting with this, go into usage metrics because it shows you how many people go in. It's showing you when they go in, when they open up a report. Okay, how many people have gone in? which is the busiest times. It looks as if 10 o'clock and three o'clock are the most important uh, busiest times for this particular dashboard. Which dashboard are most people looking at? So uh, for this uh, theatre, most people are interested in, in historic, so these three reports here, as opposed to the planned ones. 
And then over here, you've got a list of your colleagues, the names of individuals, how many times they've gone in, when they last went in, etc. Okay. Now, usage metrics is that information is uh, uh, published onto the Microsoft server, and that's the reason why if I go into Get Insights, all this will work. Remember what we said. Insights is the artificial intelligence. So there we go. This is what a computer is telling us. A, a computer uh, has read this information and basically it's come up with trends, anomalies, issues. Yeah, so this is a computer guiding us uh, on and providing us. It's done all the number crunching for us uh, and it's guiding us with some information that we can either uh, take note of or we can ignore. Okay, so this is the artificial intelligence. So we've looked at these options. We've looked at the options at the top and the options that you have within the report itself. What I now want to do is go back to the presentation. <coughs> and let's uh, just recap. So I said to you from the outset, that in order to access Power BI, you will need to go to the IT portal and request access. Once you've got access, if you then type in www.powerbi.com or you can type in app.powerbi.com, you'll get this message first time around and it'll ask you for your MFT email address. You type it in, press enter, and it will take you in. Alternatively, by the way, you can also access Power BI via Microsoft Teams. If you do want to use a browser, you can do it within Teams. Let me show you. OK, so this is my Microsoft Teams. And yep, so I've got my calendar, chat, etc., etc. And then if I go to apps over here in the top, uh, sorry, in the bottom left hand corner, it's showing me all the free apps that I can download. And one of these is Power BI. So I can download that and that will then appear over here. But there it is. Okay, it'll appear on this list. So it means that I don't have to go into a browser in order to access this. Okay, so two different options. You can either use a browser and then type in www.powerbi.com or you can download Power BI, uh, Power BI uh, onto Microsoft Teams. So what we've done today, is that we have looked at these different activities. So first of all, I showed you some of the functionality which is available to you within the report itself, so within the visuals themselves. So we noticed that when you go to a visual, uh, at the top of the visuals, you've got the filters, and then within the visual itself, in the top right-hand corner, you can copy and paste, you can go for the focus mode, which basically blows, zooms into that graphics, um, you can use those three dots at the end, uh, and then you've got options there such as chat in Teams. You can export uh, Spotlight, which is a little gimmick where if you click on Spotlight, then the other visuals are temporarily hidden. And then from time to time, do go for a right mouse click because that's when you'll be able to see options such as include or exclude, and most importantly, drill through. When you go for drill through, it takes you down to a much more granular level, all the way down to uh, patient level details if you need you to see that information. Also, with a uh, within a visual, you've got the option of converting the information into a table. And uh, yep, as I mentioned, when you drill down, you can work your way up and down the hierarchy uh, and see the information. So these are the functionalities that we came across within the visuals themselves for the report. And then we looked at some of the functionality that you have at the dashboard level. So this is at the top uh, strip at the top. So that's where you can go for file, print, you can export, you can chat in Teams, you can subscribe. Remember subscribe, the wonderful feature whereby it'll take a picture of your dashboard and send an email it direct into your inbox uh, at the frequency that you specify and at the times that you specify. You can make it into a favorite, you can zoom in, uh, you can create bookmarks, you can make comments, and above all, any tweaking that you've done, 
you can always go back by resetting to default. This slide is quite uh, interesting. I mentioned to you that you can access Power BI on your mobile phone. So this slide shows you what a mobile phone image looks like. Now, of course, with a mobile phone, you've got less space to play with. But the way the developers have done this is really quite uh, interesting. So they've got a list uh, and then you've got the visuals and then you can tap, not click, obviously, you tap on a visual and it occupies the whole space within your mobile phone. So yeah, worth considering accessing Power BI on the go if you so wish. So where do we go from here? Today, we've just on the ver we're about to finish the foundation training and some of you've done the awareness training. So basically, I'm hoping that all of you now have the skills in order to use this product as a consumer. So all of you, once you get access, you should be able to go into www.powerbi.com and then be able to move around the dashboards, use some of the options that we've looked at, some of the uh, different features, etc. However, if you are interested, why not consider joining us on the rest of the learning pathway, whereby we will show you how to become a developer. There are two training courses available. There's a basic development course, and then there's a intermediate developer course. This is two hours. This is two hours. This one will show you things like how to add data source, how to create visuals, how to publish. And then this one is the intermediate developer training where we cover some more advanced features, things like DEX calculations, implementing security, etc. And also, once you've done these two courses, um, once you then start working on your own dashboards for your local team, for example, we'll have continuous improvement drop-in sessions. So that's where the developers themselves, they'll be there, a trainer will be there, a developer will be there, and they'll be sharing with you some hints and tips and best practices. Also, Microsoft, which is of course the company behind this tool, they are always bringing in enhancements all the time. So those drop-in sessions will also be an opportunity for us to cover some of the new features which are coming on stream. So we've done the, cons the consumer part of the training. If you are now interested, you can join us on the learning pathway uh, in order to become, in order to learn how to become a developer. The developer courses are a notch up. So I did want to say to all of you that uh, we do have some prerequisites in place. So in order, if you are interested in becoming a developer and attending our developer courses, it is highly recommended that you have some previous experience of spreadsheet reporting using Excel and Power Query as an analytical tool. Okay, the trainers will introduce delegates to data calculation concepts such as DAX. And yeah, these uh, measures are very similar to functions in Excel and, the, and therefore the trainer will assume prior knowledge of Excel functions used in data analysis. It is also necessary to understand data concepts and data modeling as the training will cover such things as transforming the data and building facts and dimension tables once imported into Power BI. Okay, so you know there are some prerequisites uh, if you are interested in going ahead and joining us for the developer training. Um, and yeah, you can read all this on the hub, which I'll show you shortly. All this information, this learning pathway, plus dates, plus details about the course, is all stored on the hub. Okay, let me show you. OK, so this is the internet. Let me go. OK, let's say I'm over here. All I do is click over here and I type in power BI and then click on the magnifying glass. Power BI support hub. And this is our page on the internet. So if I scroll down, it's got some introduction, introductory text. And then it's got a list of current dashboards. And then there are some pictures and there's a catalog that you can download. Let me show you this catalog. This is the catalog. 
Let's go to the list of dashboards. Explains what the catalog is. And then most importantly, it shows you a picture and a summary of the type of information uh, that is stored in that dashboard. So we've got urgent care. We've got real time urgent care. So remember, this is the one that uh, updates every 15 minutes. We've got a dashboard for outpatients. Patient flow. Data, the one I went into. Maternity. Infection control. And then we've got uh, waiting lists or patient access. Results. HR, of course, so this is just for staff who work within the HR team. Estates and facilities. This is for us, just find out how all the dashboards, how popular they are. And then there are new dashboards coming on stream. So for example, I know that there's one for cancer coming on stream. Um, and uh, yeah, you can contact us if you wanted to know, uh, get an indication of what exactly is due to come soon. Uh, dashboards which are currently being developed. So this is a catalog and you can download it over here. You might want to download the catalog when it comes to accessing, uh, when it comes to requesting access, because uh, when you fill in the form, uh, it'll ask you what dashboards do you need access, which domain do you work in, what, ac uh, what dashboards are going to be relevant to your role. So that's where the catalog might come in use. If I scroll down, it tells me a bit more about some of the courses. So awareness foundation, which we've now done and the developer courses. And then. All the material that uh, myself as a trainer I'm using, so this is the slide deck I'm using at the moment. So you can get a copy of this. Plus we've created a user guide, a really user friendly user guide. Okay, let me just show you this. This is the user guide for today's course. OK, so what exactly Power BI is, how to get into Power BI, the website. When you go in, what it looks like. OK, the most important part is apps, because when you click on apps, it shows you all the 12, 13 different apps. OK, and then when you go and click on one of the apps, uh, what is a dashboard? Well, dashboard is a collection of individual reports. The reports consist of visuals which are tiled. They're all interactive. So as you move your mouse, the screen tip appears. There are filters at the top. You can use a slide, date slider in order to uh, specify the dates which are of interest to you. And then go for a right click, and that's where you'll see the option for drill through. And when you go for drill through, uh, you can go to a much more granular level uh, all the way down to patient uh, details if you wanted to do so. You've got some options appearing in the visual itself. Uh, yep, so we discussed that. Copy and paste, export, spotlight, sorting. You've got the ability to, you've got some options within the dashboard. You can export to Teams, create those subscriptions, make comments. And then um, what Power BI looks like on the go. Yeah, so everything I've covered is in this user guide. OK, and again, this user guide you can access over here. You can download your own version here. OK, so what else have we got? Trading schedule. So if you are interested and you meet those prerequisites, then let's find out when is the next developer course. There you go. So there's that uh, uh, prerequisite slide that I was referring to. So let's have a look. So the next course today is the 1st of March. So there's one taking place at the moment. There's another one tomorrow. Uh, and yeah, literally, you don't need to send an email. You just click here to join session. OK, let's scroll down. So we've got the full schedule. Uh, drop in sessions when they're being scheduled, FAQ, some of the questions have been asked. This is uh, good. I, I mentioned that Microsoft, the company, is always introducing enhancements to the product. So if you want to know what enhancements are coming uh, in February, March time, 
you can look at this page on the Microsoft uh, website and it tells you some of the new things coming on stream. Okay, and then what else do we have? How do I get access to Power BI in the first place? So this is the form that you need in order to get access to Power BI. This is the form that you need in order to get access to the dashboards. And when you fill in the form, specify your domain, please. And uh, obviously look at the catalog and decide which of those dashboards is going to be relevant to your uh, needs. And then finally, there's a, a YouTube video on Power BI. OK. The last thing before we take questions is I'd be grateful if all if you could fill in a evaluation form. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to put this in the chat channel. So can you just take a couple of minutes? It won't take you more than that. I'd be grateful if you just click on the link on your chat within Teams. And if you could fill that in, that'd be brilliant. And uh, yeah, just give me a thumbs up once you've done that, please. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Tui. Thanks, Paul. Okay, hey, Sidra, so Christine, Kelly, have you all finished the evaluation form? Thank you, Christine. Okay. 
Okay, well, whilst uh, some of you are completing the evaluation form, may I now take questions, please? Questions on any uh, any of the topics that we looked at today? Hi, Karen. Oh, hi. Hey, oh. Hey, I was just going to put my hand. Oh, sorry, my microphone was in the wrong place. Um, so, um, you know, in prep for the next course, the um, the next developer course, mm -hmm. and you mentioned some um, things you need to be familiar with. So I have done some of that, but if I want to just look at it again, where could I find some resources to um, just read a bit more about the aspects that you need? Sure. So if you go to the uh, hub, that's where that uh, prerequisite uh, text is listed. So let me just show you. OK, so if we go to the hub. And then if I scroll up and I go for a basic developer training schedule. There we go. There's the prerequisite. And then do you want to just use Google and YouTube and just to get a bit familiar with some of the ones if I haven't done every single one of those? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I mean, ba basically, you know, we just want to make sure that uh, we're not, uh, the topics which are covered are going to be appropriate. Uh, so as long as you're a good user of Excel uh, and have used some of the analytical uh, tools uh, within Excel, uh, and obviously you have that interest in learning, uh, then that should suffice. But uh, okay. um, yeah, you know, have a look at that. If you feel the course is going to be appropriate, uh, then by all means attend. You know, knowledge is never wasted. So uh, um, uh, yes, yeah, so give it some thoughts. See what you think. Yeah, I think I think it'll be great. And I think um, anything I'm pretty good with Excel. I pick it up pretty quickly. Um, so anything that I did, you know, I'm, I'm sure I could learn anyway after that course as well. Mm -hmm. Yep um so yeah you can go for the basic developer course and then leave it a few weeks uh, and then once you've played practice further then go for the intermediate session thanks okay. thank you uh okay so question from kelly so the license there's two licenses there's a free license which is what all consumers need to have so that's not going to cost anything uh, just go to the it portal request that uh, done dust it you know you'll be able to go into uh, www.powerbi.com and uh, do everything i've showed you today there is another license which is paid uh, that one you will need if you want to become a developer and you wish to actually publish what you've done OK, so uh, you don't necessarily need it now if you are going ahead for the developer courses, but certainly if your intention is to develop something uh, and to publish, that's when that paid license comes in. But for the majority of the people, um, it's the free license that people will need. Um, and the cost, I think, uh, not 100% certain, but when you go into the IT portal, it does tell you what the cost is. Obviously, that cost will then be passed to your department. It's not uh, too high, but uh, there is a cost associated. Um, but as I mentioned, it's only a requirement if you want to become a developer and you actually wish to publish. Other questions, please? OK, wonderful. Well, if you do have any further questions, please do come back to me or the implementation team. Um, do have a look at the schedule. Do see when the next courses are. If you feel that the developer course is going to be appropriate to you, uh, by all means, do go for that. But certainly in the meantime, you know, do access the free license so you can do everything that I demonstrated today uh, and fill in uh, the request form for the dashboard, which is going to be relevant to your domain uh, so you can see exactly uh, what Power BI can do uh, and how we can help you in interpreting the data for your uh, for your hospital, for your specialty. Thank you very much for attending and hopefully we'll meet again on another course.